Elon Musk says his company Neuralink has implanted a brain chip in a human in a preliminary clinical study. The billionaire businessman went to social media on X writing of the first human received an implant from Neuralink yesterday and is recovering well. And initial results show promising neuron spike detection. So here to discuss what this all means mm -hmm. is assistant professor of neurology at Temple University, Dr. Leah Kroll. Okay, Dr. Carl, this sounds like like seriously crazy sci-fi stuff. Yeah. So explain to us what this all is. It does sound like a mad science experiment, you guys. So basically, this is the concept of using a brain-machine interface to help people. Neuralink is a device that gets implanted within the brain and then reads the electrical signals that our brain cells are constantly sending to one another. And then it can translate those signals into actions outside of the body. In this case, the ability to control a computer or a smartphone. And Doc, we should also point out that Neuralink is not the first company to develop this type of technology, but how is it being used to help people communicate? It is absolutely not the first player on this field. This area of research really started back in the 90s, but in recent years, the pace of that research has just accelerated immensely. Uh, last year, there was a Swiss company that was able to use a brain machine interface to help a paralyzed man walk. Uh, over the summer, some researchers in San Francisco were able to use brain machine interface technology to help a woman who had lost her voice from stroke speak for the first time in 18 years through a computer. So we're really talking about using this technology to take people who are neurologically impaired and give them back some of that neurologic function and the ability to interact in the world. Physically, what are the risks? And ethically, what are the risks that you can see with this type of technology? Dr. Jen, very important question here. So the first physical risks that we're gonna be thinking about are surgical complications. The Neuralink implant is small and that's great, but getting an implant in your brain is still brain surgery. So we have to worry about the possibility for bleeding, for infection, for damaging brain tissue. As time goes on, we also wanna make sure that the device doesn't interfere with the normal signaling patterns that go on in our brains. So we're really gonna to have to watch out for that long term. And then when we get into the ethical realm, that raises so many questions because we're in completely unchartered territory here. There's concerns about the data that this device is collecting and how secure it might be. There's potential for privacy concerns to come into play. Uh, bad actors could potentially come into play and hack these devices. So there's a lot of discussions that the medical community is going to have to have with the legal community, the ethical community, the technological community, so we can work together to figure out how do we regulate something like this moving forward. It's a lot of questions yeah. that still need to be answered. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, obviously you talked about helping people who are paralyzed or who lose their ability to speak after stroke. Any other potential applications in terms of its use? Yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of glad you bring this up, Dr. Jen. You know, there's been some chatter out there about one day, would this type of technology be put into use for healthy people who are trying to enhance their own function? Um, and I have to say that's probably an ethical can of worms that we're not ready to attack yet. I'm grateful as a neurologist that right now the research is focused, is focused solely on helping people who really need it because I don't wanna lose sight of the heart of this story here, which is that we're, we're we're talking about maybe having a medical miracle in our grasp in the future and just what that would mean to patients cannot be understated. And let's talk about where this is in the FDA process. I know the FDA approved human trials. So talk us through how soon we could actually see something like this. So I've been telling people we're years away from rolling this out to the masses, but I do think it's something that within my lifetime as a physician, I will one day be able to walk into my clinic and talk to my patients about this groundbreaking treatment that we can now offer them. That's such great analysis, balance, pros and cons. Dr. Leah Kroll, thank you so much. It is fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.